You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, we search for some inspiration for our next project, and we cruise the countryside to get the lowdown on a returning trend from an expert. One of the beauties of mini trucking and, and customizing a mini truck is that there aren't many rules. Then, we rescue a truck that's unlike anything you've ever seen. Could this be our next project? This has got to be the most iconic design ever. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Eric Smart. Yeah, and you know, we just wrapped up on a really huge build, our 1985 K10 square body, the Faux Guy. We started out with a really solid truck and took it down to the bare frame so that we could rebuild it from the ground up. After some final touches and a little bit of bling, we took it out and put some miles on it. And even though I'm not a Chevy guy, I have to say I'm really happy how this truck turned out. Yeah, that thing was great. It was beautiful. But we do eventually have to move on to something else. But I don't know how to top that. I was going to say, what do you want to build next? I'm fresh out of ideas. I mean, there's nothing better than a jacked up square body. OK, well, obviously, we need to do something a little different, right? Right. And it's always good to step out of your comfort zone. OK. And that includes me, too. And you know, it never hurts to get a little inspiration from some other people uh -oh. and some other builds. Check this out. Oh, we got some mini trucks in here. Yes, sir. So mini trucks started in the 50s, but primarily in North America. We started seeing them in the 70s. The gas crisis really drove a demand for a more fuel efficient vehicle. Parking spaces were becoming smaller. Of course, people have been customizing vehicles since vehicles existed, and a community sort of developed around mini trucks and customizing them. With mini trucks being produced and imported and or produced domestically, uh, it wasn't long before people wanted an entry-level way to customize their vehicle, and the mini truck is a perfect platform. Just like, you know, 50 years ago, the Deuce Coupe you could have for 50 bucks. You can pick up a mini truck for not a lot of money these days and start making it your own. One of the beauties of mini trucking and, and customizing a mini truck is that there aren't many rules. So you want to have aftermarket wheels, typically air suspension or hydraulic. Definitely need a theme and kind of like Purple Rain has a theme. Everything follows that theme with the color, with the graphics. And if you're really wanting to go to that level, then it's difficult to define until you're in the process and you're trying to finish it. Mini trucking is one of the few genres of automotive uh, enthusiasm that will promote and even award uh, a vehicle, and typically they say under construction is the class at a show where you can take your truck if it's in primer or if you don't have custom wheels yet or any other thing that you might want to do that's not finished, um, you can still participate and even win an award at a show. Mark, this is a 92 Chevrolet S10 that I drive every day. Nice. Full air suspension from Thorbeck, tubbed in the bed with bed liner. Very nice. Original paint. Love it. All the dents. Original interior too, it looks like. Yes, sir, basically. Air suspension controls in the center, aftermarket steering wheel. So this truck, you didn't do a body drop, right? No, just no, this is just lace bags. frame, just frame. Notch the frame, clearance in the bed with the tubs, and uh, control arms in the front. Let's see under the hood. All right, let's do it. Oh, small block. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't expect that. It moves out of its own way. Yeah, it's basically stock, but that's enough for this little truck, yep. right? Perfect, original fuel injection, modified to run the V8 with a computer and a chip and a Pretty healthy cam. So, Brad, this thing looks awesome. I don't even know where to start. I mean, tell us about it. Yes, sir, it's a 97 Chevrolet S10. Start off completely bone stock. It is bagged, obviously. Complete tubbed out, bags over axle. 22 inch billet specialty wheels. Full custom paint. Full blown custom interior by big body, all leather and Mercedes carpet, also with a suicide door. 
And the truck is also traditionally body dropped three and a half inches uh, by side panels to raise the floorboard up for the truck to go lower than just laying frame. And that's how you got it all the way down on the ground. Yes, sir, that's how we got it. That is awesome. This thing is just gorgeous. Let's see what's under the hood. Wow, that is the cleanest four cylinder I have ever seen in one of these things. I appreciate it. It's all uh, bed lined wheel tubs. Uh, the bottom of the hood is all skinned. Uh, bead rolled panels, paint powder coated everything. Michigan Metal Works uh, upper and lower control arms, little shop steering linkage kit with QA1 front shocks. So there is nothing on this truck that hasn't been touched. That's right. Man, that is Woo. insane. So I know your truck drives. Oh yes. Daily. This isn't a trailer queen, is it? No. What do you say we uh, hop in the truck, the four of us, and go out for a cruise? After all, that's what mini trucking's all about, right? That's right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's catch lunch. Coming up next, we go cruising with our new friends, and they help us lay out the plans for our next build. Man, I'm glad we decided to head out for a cruise today, and I'm even more glad that you guys came by with these trucks. You know, I've never been a real big fan of mini trucks, but these are pretty cool, and I think I'm starting to feel a little bit of inspiration for our next build. Yeah, this truck is just a great cruiser. It's great to have a mini truck also because it doesn't have to be a thrash type build. You can do a modification and then drive it to work on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, incremental build. Right. I think that that's another point to make too about these and to really respect the mini trucking community because you mentioned earlier about, you know, the in progress or under construction builds. Oh, yes. That that's not only accepted, but promoted. Like, hey, bring bring your under construction build and you could win an award. Right, like we wanna see what you're working on. Yeah, that's awesome, I love that. I think, I think that's gonna be a big part of this resurgence of mini trucking that's starting to go on now, is it's gonna be a lot of the older guys who were getting into it when it was big in the early 2000s. Yeah. And they're they're still gonna have these old projects because you got you know you put all this time and effort into something you don't want to just get rid of it. If you're talking about somebody somebody who's never built a mini truck before, where would you tell them to start? For someone who's never done it, it's hard to go wrong with an S10. Right. There's tons of aftermarket support. A lot of guys prefer the second generation. It's more rounded off and, and modern looking than the first generation. So obviously you're saying S10. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I mean it's. Is there just that, like why? I mean, is there just that many of them out there? Price point, aftermarket support? All, all those reasons. You talk about, you know, the heydays of mini trucking. I mean, if you didn't go cruise Second Avenue on Saturday night, you, you were doing it wrong. You gotta have fun, right? That's what it's all about, right? Well, Brad's truck is... Over the top, insane, uh, all I the mean, things. all the things. But I guarantee you, because he's a mini trucker, if you ask him, he, he, has at least, well, he has at least one more thing in mind. Yeah. At least one. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's, that's that. part of it. The possibilities are endless oh. with cars these days. I mean, if you can think of doing it, then it odds are you can make it happen. Yeah, I've always been more of a lifted truck guy, but I think this this would definitely be a fun one. Oh yeah. Well, I think the S10 would be a really good platform for this because I mean they're they're easy to find, they're cheap, parts availability is great, and I mean it it's just a cool old truck. You know, they're what, some of the most reliable things ever built. So you really can't go wrong with you know throwing some modifications on there and making it something cool. I mean, I've never done anything like this before, but I don't know, maybe maybe me and Mark might do one of these someday. Yeah. It might be fun. Well, I want to tell you, I didn't tell Eric because it's going to be a big surprise, but I found us a second gen S10. Probably exactly what Brad's truck looked like before he started his build. You might need a paramedic when you tell him. I mean, he might have a heart attack. He's the, he's the off-road guy, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a square body, big big truck kind of guy, yeah. Uh, I think you, I think you might win him over on this one. Yeah, I think I think we might be able to do a little something with it, but 
Might have to do a little bit of convincing with Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's typically how it goes. So let's just say we're we're gonna build that truck. Where do we start? Like, what are what are some some things that we need to grab? Uh, well, clearly you need a nice set of wheels. You got to do something to lower it. Yeah. It's two wheel drive, right? Yep. Yep. You got to have air suspension. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I know a guy who can help you with that. Probably even has some parts already sitting there. Okay, speaking my language. And I think I think that's one of the things that really sets mini truckers aside from other types of you know car and truck enthusiasts. Is you guys just appreciate what you've got. Yeah. It's all about the build, not so much about the final product. Well, this has been a been a great experience, and I, I really appreciate you guys coming out. And... Likewise, it's uh, it's always good to go ride some back roads, make new friends. Absolutely. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Amen to that. Thank you guys for bringing your trucks out. Yes, this sir. has been a blast. Um, let's just say I'm inspired. Yeah, I think uh, I think I've got some ideas. I think we need to go shopping. Yeah, I think we need to go back to the shop and put uh, pen to paper. Inspired, right? Inspired, totally. Inspired. I want to ride in that truck though. Oh, Come on. I gotta take a ride in this thing. Can I ride back to the shop in that? Let's go. Let's All go. right, Let's hop in. It. It's been a good day. Next up, we dive into a driveway rescue on a truck that has a very unique personality. Well, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. Well, we're back on the road and we're in the Rock Auto driveway rescue van because we're gonna do a little rescue. But this isn't going to be for someone else. We are going to be rescuing our own truck. Can you guess what we're doing a driveway rescue on? Well, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a small truck. Um, what are we talking, Mazda B series, Ford Ranger, S10? 1995. Chevy S10. I don't want to go into too many details about the truck. Just kind of let it speak for itself when you see it. But I will say this, the truck is in need of some work and I've already made a deal on the truck. It's ours. All right. So we're officially building ourselves a mini truck. This is definitely a project. Is that it right there? Yeah, the white one. Oh boy. It's got good bones as they say. Well, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Woo! Fancy. That is something else. Well, it's not what I expected. <laughs> Here's what I like about this truck. Super solid, straight truck. Gotta ignore all of the, you know, the accessories, but other than that, it's a really good base, and also, under the hood. Oh, wow. So it's got the 4.3, which is nice but it looks like it has been maintained for the most part mechanically. The issues right now is it will not start, which I think could just be a battery, uh, and then it has a pretty significant cooling leak or two. I think we should just dig in and start, uh, see, well, let's see if we can get it running first. Yeah, let's get after it. Let me grab the jump box. All right, give it a shot. All right. Well, that was easy enough. Can you look under there and see if the coolant's dripping at all? Yeah, it looks like just a little bit right down the front. Okay, well that'd be a good place to start. And then uh, we can always put a battery in it later. Let's just start tearing into the cooling system. I got a bunch of stuff here from Rock Auto, so I'll awesome. do a little inventory. All right. all right, well, I knew this thing had a coolant leak issue. So I went and got a little bit of everything from Rock Auto for this. Um, in no particular order, a new fan clutch, because anytime you have the fan off, it's always a good idea to replace those. Uh, hoses, of course, the water pump itself, a couple of gallons of 50-50 coolant, uh, some hose clamps, thermostat, uh, and then just for good measure, a radiator. If we're gonna pull the radiator out anyway, um, it's probably the original radiator by looking at it. So. We'll get it out, go ahead and put a new one in it. That way we don't have any problems with the cooling system. Let's get this coolant drained. While the coolant's draining, I'm pulling the fan shroud out. That out of the way. 
Oh, that radiator has been replaced. Look at that. Surprise. Oh, look, the hose clamp came apart. <laughs> <laughs> the hose clamp said, no more, we're done. So we can get the radiator hoses off, get everything disconnected from the radiator. We can get the radiator out of the way. That hose is soft. You want to look for the space between the two blades. It's a little bit bigger than the rest of them. They actually do that. So you've got room to get in and work on these things. I'm just going to get these broke loose here. Then we should be able to get them off by hand. Now that the fan and water pump pulley are loose, I'll remove the serpentine belt by relieving the tension. Now that should come off nice and easy. Now that we got all the lines and hoses disconnected, I think we can go ahead and pull this radiator out. All right, just a couple of bolts here and we'll have this water pump off. Well, I don't like the way it was sealed, but the worst part, all this white right here is where the coolant started coming out of the weep hole. Get it cleaned up and uh, start putting it back together. Coming up, we get a feel for how this S10 drives. Up front, we're gonna modify and plate the A-arms, and we finally reveal our plans for our upcoming project. Well, we're plugging away on our Rock Auto driveway rescue that we're doing on our S10. We got everything torn down and cleaned up. It's time to put this thing back together. Well, we got this new water pump from Rock Auto. Got it ready to go with the studs put in, so now it's time to drop it in the truck. Okay, so we're just gonna get these gaskets preset on here. That way we don't have to worry about it. And then once those are set, we'll throw a little bit of RTV on the end of these bolts because they run through coolant passages in there. And once you've got all your RTV on, you can go ahead and snug everything up, make sure the gaskets stayed in place, and then tighten it down. With the water pump bolts tight, we'll install the heater hose nipple. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and get our water outlet and thermostat put in. Well, the previous owners didn't mention anything about this thing overheating before we bought it, but since we're already in here and this thing is pretty nasty, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a brand new one anyways. Once we get this thermostat put in, then we can go ahead and throw our radiator back in here. All right, brand new radiator. This thing in here, we'll have ourselves a brand new entire cooling system. Fits right in. Get that lower shroud. There we go. Very nice. Go ahead and get these lines attached. This one's got a oil cooler and a trans cooler built in. So you gotta make sure when you order it, that you get the right one. So while Mark's finishing up that radiator, I'm gonna go ahead and get the fan blades installed on this new clutch that we got here. So if you're ever not sure which way your fan is supposed to go, you just wanna look and see how that lines up with the fitment on the clutch here. And that lines up with the bolts. And so it's gonna go on just like this. All right, now that we got that done, let's go see how Mark's doing up front. How's it going up here? Oh, perfect timing. Awesome. Got all the cooler lines attached, got the heater hose on there, got the lower hose already on there and tight. So she get that on, it's just from there up. This thing will be ready. I'll go get the coolant. Let's get her done. With the fan and clutch in place, we can reinstall the belt. All right, and then with a belt like this, if you've got a pulley that has a little bit of extra room, you always want to look straight down the belt and make sure it's riding straight. Time for the upper shroud, followed by the upper hose. It's time to add some coolant. Get the air out of the system. Take this thing for a drive. All right, well, we got it all bled. Everything looks good. Just got the cap on there. Ready to take this thing for a ride. You know what? I'm gonna let Eric drive. You know, I don't know if we should aim, you know, for the moon with this build. No, we don't, we don't need this thing putting rockers on the ground, but 
to at least be able to lay frame, I think that'll get us into a good spot with the rest of the mini truckers out here. We're starting with our S10 in completely stock form with its coil spring independent front suspension and leaf sprung rear. Up front, we're gonna modify and plate the A-arms, ditch the springs and shocks, and in place of the coil spring, we're gonna install the airbags. Remote shock mounts will finish it off. Out back, we'll ditch the leaf spring setup and install a full back half bolt-on five-link kit with bags. Out back, we're gonna make room by sectioning the bed to allow the axle to tuck up in between the inner wheel tubs. Then we'll box it all in. Inside the bed will be all of the air suspension supporting components like the compressor and tank. We'll be installing a subwoofer box in the bed along with supporting amplifiers. And to carry the sound into the cab, we'll do a blow through. Inside the cab, our S10 will get a pair of bucket seats and custom console, which will house all of the controls for our stereo and air suspension. To finish it all off, we'll top the bed with a tonneau cover, add a custom grill, and then give our Mini a custom paint job to make it stand out in true Mini truck fashion. Lastly, we'll add a set of billet wheels and matching tires before we take this thing out for its first outing as a proper Mini truck. <laughs>